Well, well, good afternoon. We are in the backyard. Today, we're gonna to be fixing our boat transom. We're gonna reinforce it with some thick aluminum plates, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So before this video starts, I wanna start off by explaining why I'm doing this. So a little while back, I brain farted one night, and as I was packing up, I backed over my boat. My, uh, the truck tires went directly onto the transom, and it went flat. So. I did a half-assed job and I didn't fix it all the way. So as you can see, I didn't quite fix it all the way. So what I did, I glued both sides together. One side stayed completely fine and then the other side started peeling apart. So I put um, some PVC from a roof gutter and I basically drilled holes all the way through and then clamped it tight and it held great but then the other side started peeling off, which I knew was gonna happen, so right now I'm gonna steal Ryan's idea, and I am going to fix my transom for good. It, it'll last the rest of its lifespan. But just wanted to say that the boat transom did not fail. It was not the manufacturer's fault. It was my fault because I backed my truck up onto this. So that was my doing, not the boat's fault. So Ryan's idea, he cut out a board and he basically mapped it to where he wanted it to fit. So this does not slide down. It goes in between and sits right here. And this is where his sheet of metal would go. Now, before we take anything apart, um, I got sent this video from a friend and basically I have my Yamaha motor in the back and there's a little flat piece on the bottom that should be flush with the bottom of the boat. So I'm going to go ahead and test that and make sure it's flush. If it's not flush, I'll just raise the transom when I put it on. I'm going to roll the clip of the video I saw and then I'll also link it down below if you want to go check it out for yourself. Boat owners and fishermen, Wally Stepnicki here from the boating scene once again. This week I'd like to cover a problem that's come up from time to time about boats rolling over under hard acceleration. And uh, yeah, it's a very simple, very easy cure, which we've sort of covered in one of the videos earlier on. But what it has got to do with is a turning action of the propeller and a motor fitted incorrectly. The reason the boat rolls over is because the engine is too deep on the transom. Very simple fix, get yourself a straight edge, on the cavitation plate, your engine should be level, should be an extension of the keel. If it is not, you must re must repair the problem. You have adjusting holes, so either raise or lower the engine, but generally for this particular problem, it's a matter of lifting the engine. The engine is too deep. So if you lift your engine, and the problem will be overcome. Thanks very much. Bye. Now, wait, 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 wait before you go and start measuring your motor to see if that worked. That was meant for the vessels with a bowed bottom and bigger dinghies that are used in the military. The transom that is currently made on the Scout is universal, so it works for all motors, specifically short shaft motor. Now at the time, I didn't realize that. So during this video, I am showing you how to create a transom that is lifted up a couple inches to where the anti-levitation plate on my motor is parallel with the bottom of the boat to supposedly ride smoother. Now, the problem with that is, well, you'll see sooner in the video and you'll see the complications I had once I was out on the water. Now, the reason I am putting this in the video is I wanted to share my experience of what I did wrong, what not to do, but this is the correct way to do it. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you the proper way to fix your transom Therefore, if something like you running over your boat with your car, like I did, you'll be able to fix it in the future. So as we continue in our building project, I'm going to be raising my transom up four inches. However, when you guys reinforce your transom, don't raise it to four inches. Just go ahead and match the same width and height as your current transom that is on your vessel right now. I'm going to go ahead and let the video continue playing. And if there's anything else that is confusing throughout the video, I'll pop up and I'll give you a better explanation. All right, so I do need to raise it quite a bit, um, probably only about four inches. Now, you can't really see with the GoPro lens, but, but the bottom of the anti-levitation plate needs to be flush with the very bottom of the boat. Now, to do that, I am just gonna take the aluminum that I have and build it up a little more 
and when I do so, it should ride a lot smoother on the water. Levitation plate, and that needs to be flush with the bottom of the boat right here. This piece needs to go higher up, and then this piece needs to go flush right there. So what I'll do is I'll probably just raise this about four inches. It is currently six inches from the top, but I want a little bit underneath. So we're gonna go ahead and take the motor off, start unscrewing things, and then measure out our piece on our aluminum sheet over here. All right, so first things first, we're gonna take off all the tape. Uh, I put this tape to protect it when I was rolling it up. Obviously, I could get these little rubber mounts to put over the caps, but I was too lazy to, and tape worked just as well. So we're gonna throw that down here. Now we are gonna grab our socket wrench. So that guy's taken off. Now we're gonna take the two front and back pieces off and then we're gonna leave the drain here. So basically with my wood piece, I'm gonna go ahead and do an outline on the aluminum board but I'm going to add in four inches. So from the top, I'm just going to add up four inches and I'm going to make the line on the sheet of metal. Uh, before that, I'm going to go on the side yard, see if I have another flat piece. Um, I'm just going to basically tape it like Ryan did and do my design up front and then put it onto the metal. So came back and we have our final sheet before we go and map. Now the only thickest or the, th the only thinnest piece I could find was probably half inch thick. Um, obviously it is not as thin as the original sheet, but it's okay, it'll do. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down on the sheet here and I need to leave enough space to make two of them because they're both gonna sit on the transom and they're gonna get combined together. So first one, This is what we have going for us right now. If I just leave that there, that is our setup. Um, so it's been a couple days since that last clip. Um, Ryan is here to help me out because I am struggling very badly. So uh, we just came back from shopping. I'm gonna go ahead and roll that clip and then we will get on with the build. Okay. So you said you're good with buying one extra? Yeah, yeah, go for it. And then we need nuts and bolts. Here's that. Thank you. We also need one of these guys. All right, yours is gonna be a little bit coarser. That's fine though. So you're gonna All paint right. over it. Here you go. And then uh, screws. Are you buying paint or no? Uh, no, I'll just use spray paint. How much were they each, Ryan? 149 each? Mm-hmm. They're stainless. Gotta pay more for the premium. Uh, now we need poly washers. Um, it's just another layer of protection to prevent corrosion on not only the screws, but your transom as well. I hope there's 12 in the next one too. Sorry. Let's 
so maybe like right about there because that's so powerful it will twist the or it makes the aluminum slide a little bit so you want some weight, weight on there um you can even step on it with your foot if you want i wouldn't advise that just because i can't tie a bow behind myself ridiculous <laughs> go get your momo <laughs> All right, so, so far we have currently drilled in holes on the side and now we are adding our nuts and bolts in. We got four on the bottom, we got two on the sides and then two more up top. And then we're gonna clamp everything together and if we have time, we're gonna try to do a harbor trip. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. doesn't use bolts and just clamps his boat trains together on the water valleys. And you don't need to do a loose bait, you can just tighten it all the way. I was gonna have been your encourager. I'm just a supervisor. And supervisor. You said it before I could even say it. Actually you started before I did. Yeah, that's obviously. Cool. Dude, this thing is solid. It is. Woo! Uh, how depressed are you, Ryan? All that hard work and effort. It's pretty bad. <laughs> like sucking in air. So he just spent like seven hours trying to fix Josh's transom. Josh, go full speed for us. Go full speed. <laughs> Did it work at all? We used to go 20 miles an hour. Now we're going like six. So what, bad. What do you think, Josh? We're cutting the transom. We're... Are you proud of your invention? I'm, I'm glad I got All right, so we are back from the harbor. Uh, we went and tested it out and it sucked. So we're just gonna cut the transom back down to the original size, which is lower than this four inches that we raised it up. And then we're just gonna call it good. That wood is just to about the uh, bottom of the transom. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark along there.
right, there we go. We got one side done. Now we got to do the other side and then we'll shave all this down, make it nice and smooth, uh, put the bolts in and then put the regular, whatchamacallit, back on there. Getting ready to go into hyperspeed. Loving the new bait caster. First drop, first fish. We got a nice little red rockfish on the Big Nick jig. Pink. I added a exist hook. Oh, I'm excited. There we go. One there, one there. Oops. Stop flipping around. Kevin, show me your fish. Nice one. Okay. Finally, you have made it to the end of the video. Um, I wanna say this project took me about seven hours. I had a bunch of different complications throughout the project, but they were overcome, thankfully. After our first outing where we had raised the transom four inches, it didn't work. It, it was sucking in air, it was really snotty. Now, at the time, I didn't realize that that requirement was meant for military vessels and not inflatable boats. I, I assumed it meant for all vessels, no. So, so that requirement is only meant for bowed boats, like anything that's like V-shaped. The transom that is currently on the Scout is universal. So any motor you have, it'll fit on there just fine. So you don't have to raise it or lower it. On our second outing, once I had went back and completely cut the transom, it worked phenomenal. My buddy and I, we actually did an eight mile trek all the way up the coast and then a couple miles out and then back. So it was about a 20 mile round trip and we used a gallon and a half of fuel out of three gallons and the transom performed phenomenal. I didn't have any breakage. I didn't have any leaking. It performed really good, it was solid. And then it was super cool because we had a huge aircraft carrier with Ospreys at the front come up to us, it was awesome. And then on our way home from our spot, we had all these dolphins cruising by us. It, it was a blast, it was a blast. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up by showing you the items you will need if you wanna do this project. Um, like I said before, the reason the transom broke is not because of my powerful motor. It is because I backed up onto it with the truck, causing the transom to go flat on itself. So that was it's not the manufacturer's fault, it was my fault. So, things you will need. You are gonna need some nuts. You are gonna need some bolts. 
and you're gonna need some washers. Now, I got mine at Ace Hardware. You can get yours at Home Depot or any other hardware store. You wanna get the stainless steel ones because they're gonna last longer in the salt water. Now, the next thing you will need is a pair of gloves. The aluminum sheet that I was using is very sharp all around the edges. So carrying it from point A to point B was a little sketchy doing it with bare hands. So I highly recommend you wear gloves, especially when you start cutting it and you got all these shards of aluminum everywhere. You don't want that getting in your fingers. It's like fiberglass. It's no bueno, no good. Now the aluminum sheet I got at a metal shop, which I will link down below. I believe I got a sheet that was six millimeters thick. I, I could be mistaken, um, but I'm pretty sure that's the thickness that I got. Now, another thing you were gonna need is a way to cut the aluminum sheet, okay? So for us, as you saw in the video, we went to Home Depot and they are, $1.24 a piece. We got five of them thinking it was going to be a lot harder to cut the metal. And in reality, we only used two, only two. But obviously, I recommend to get more just in case. Now, once everything was cut, we had to go and sand all the edges, make sure it was nice and smooth. So we got a grinding and polish disc. It smooths the aluminum really nicely, gets it nice and smooth, and there's no rough edges. Uh, this piece, I believe, costs $6 at Home Depot. I could be wrong. I'll have to <laughs> go back through and look at it. Now, for both cutting and sanding discs, you're going to need a grinder, which I currently don't have. I was borrowing from a friend, but this is what it looks like right here. Uh, you can pick one up at Ace Hardware or Lowe's or Home Depot or any other hardware shop. Now, another thing I recommend you get is some caulking. So... Um, unfortunately, I guess I forgot to record a certain part. I had the drain plug on the boat, which I unscrewed and I left the back piece in, which prevents water coming into the boat. And then on the inside, I went and filled in the hole to make it nice and waterproof. And then after that, I put my two aluminum plates together and it was solid. And ever since I've been taking it out, I haven't had any water problems getting it. Other than that, that's all you need. Um, obviously, you'll get, you're gonna want to get a drill to drill in holes to put in your bolts, um, some clamps to clamp the aluminum pieces together, and in my case, maybe an extra friend to come help you out with your project. I wanna say total this project cost me about $100. The aluminum sheet was $80. Um, Ryan got his for $25. I believe he got a different kind than I did, so that's my fault could have saved so much money. And then I had to get nuts and bolts, which were about an extra $20, which were about an extra $10. And then the grinder and blades, which were probably an extra 10 bucks. So $100, $100 $120 total, but I got it done. I'm glad it's, it's pretty exciting breaking and then recreating things. It, it's, it's, it's quite thrilling accidentally breaking something of yours and then taking the time to fix it in a unique way. And you look back at it and you're like, wow, I fixed that all by myself. Obviously I had help of Super Ryan leading me in the right direction, but it was a fun project and I'm glad I did it. I'm sorry this was such a long video. I appreciate you watching to the end. I hope this helped with any questions you had and I'll see you out on the water.